Hello everyone, welcome to Scaria.com. I'm Dr. Hina Khan and today we are going to discuss the lacrimal diseases. Now the lacrimal apparatus is basically responsible for the production of the tear film in an individual. Basically, the components of the lacrimal apparatus are the lacrimal gland that is basically encompassing the orbital and the palpebral portion. In return, we have a drainage system that is consisting of the two canaliculi draining into the nasolacrimal sac. And finally, uh, they are draining into the nasolacrimal duct in the individual. Foremostly, we'll be discussing the precorneal tear film. So having the background knowledge is again the mainstay towards the applied clinical anatomy of the individual and how do we correlate this anatomy towards different pathological features uh, of the tear film production. We'll be dealing with the lacrimal drainage system on the other hand and what can go wrong with this lacrimal drainage system including the canaliculi, the sac, or the duct openings. Finally, there are a lot of uh, investigative techniques uh, to evaluate the functionality of the lacrimal gland that would include the Schirmer's test, which is basically the installation of uh, filter paper into the lower fornis and just evaluating uh, the production of the lacrimal gland in these individuals. A lot of staining techniques are being uh, pre-imposed over here. Uh, most importantly or most significantly, we have the Rose Bengal staining, which categorize the patient into type A, B, and C categories depending upon the severity of the disease. Then we have the fluorescein dye testing techniques in which we inject a radioactive dye and just perform the uh, studies on the lacrimal drainage system. Then we can perform the digital subtraction, the cryocystographies. These are one of the radioimaging techniques that can be performed for the evaluation of the functionality as well. We have the cryocystograms that are in line of the investigative techniques. The conditions that can arise in the lacrimal apparatus, one of it is the infectious state. It can be a primary infection of the lacrimal gland or either it can be a secondary infection that is acquired by the neighboring structures. Whatever the case is, it is uh, termed as decryoadenitis. Then we can also come up with the tumors of the lacrimal gland, either benign or the uh, malignant tumors. Uh, it is basically evaluated when we perform the biopsy techniques on these lacrimal glands. The tests performed are the tear film breakup tests. And then we have the cases of chronic dacroadenitis. So it can be an acute infectious state of the lacrimal gland, or either it can be a chronic infectious state of the uh, lacrimal gland. Whatever the case is, we have to evaluate the etiological factors, the age, the gender, the environmental factors as well as the socioeconomic status of the individual make him or her predisposed to such uh, infectious states. Any trauma to the inferior canaliculi has to be highlighted when you are taking the history from the patient. Dacrocystitis is one of the complications that can arise in these individuals. Then we can have the dacrocystorhinostomy as one of the most important treatment modality whenever we are dealing with cases of lacrimal diseases. Uh, it can be a congenital form of the uh, lacrimal diseases. Most importantly, we come across the nasolacrimal duct obstruction in the infants. So we have a range of uh, pathological features of ophthalmopathies that are being discussed on our website. So do watch these lectures. Thank you for watching scaria.com and get access to watch the complete lecture.